Hi all, this is the first video for Chapter 1 and for our Biology 160 class as a whole. We'll try to answer the question, what is biology? That question might seem complex, but it's actually pretty easy. Biology is the study of life. But that begs the question, what is life? That question might seem easy, but it's actually really complex trying to come up with a description that covers all living things. Humans are obviously living. We know that our dogs and cats are alive too. So are trees. But so are weird things like jellyfish and mushrooms and microscopic organisms like bacteria. What do all of us living things have in common? It turns out there isn't any one particular thing that we can point to that defines things as being alive. Our textbook gives a list of eight characteristics of life. Order, sensitivity or response to stimuli, reproduction, adaptation, growth and development, regulation, homeostasis, and energy processing. That's a pretty good list. But it isn't the list. If you do an internet search on properties of life or characteristics of life, you'll find some sources that list seven characteristics, and others that list only six or even five, and yet other sites that list as many as ten characteristics. Well, our list of eight characteristics is pretty good, so let's go over them real quickly. Order should be pretty straightforward. Living organisms are made of very specific parts that combine together in very specific ways to form their bodies. Living organisms also perform very specific processes at very specific times and in very specific sequences. The toad in the photograph is a good example. All living things, big and small, have very specific and predictable order. Sensitivity and response to stimuli. All organisms sense and respond to changes in their environment. The sensitive plant in the photo responds to touch, as well as many other environmental stimuli. Even single-celled bacteria do this, for example by swimming toward food or away from toxins. Reproduction. Living things reproduce. If not, they'll go extinct. Reproduction may be one of the main hallmarks of life. The kittens in the picture are all offspring from the same set of parents. Growth and development. All organisms grow and mature and develop from their newborn state. Kittens grow up to be adult cats. We all know at least some of the changes that occur during this development. Growth and development are characteristics for which we all have some understanding. Adaptation. In any one population, individuals with characteristics that lead to greater survival and reproduction will tend to produce more offspring than other individuals who have less useful characteristics. Over time, those beneficial characteristics will become more and more common in the population, and the less beneficial characteristics will become less and less common. This increase in the frequency of beneficial characteristics is called adaptation. White fur, for example, has come to be the dominant color in polar bears. In the future, as polar bears struggle to survive in less and less icy conditions, we, we may see a darkening of their fur, at least during the winter parts of the year. Regulation and homeostasis go hand in hand. Regulation refers to the regulating of specific processes, not too much or too fast, and not too little or too slow. Homeostasis means maintaining overall internal balance. Polar bears regulate their rates of fat metab metabolism and heat production. This helps them maintain body temperature within homeostatic limits. Energy processing. All organisms make use of sources of energy to accomplish their functions. Condors do this, so do hummingbirds, and so do humans and the bacteria that live on us and in us. Order, sensitivity or response to stimuli, reproduction, adaptation, growth and development, regulation, homeostasis, and energy processing. A good set of characteristics that is common to all living things. Now, select a living thing, like your pet, or a houseplant, or a bird that's flitting around in your garden, or whatever. Describe how this living thing exhibits each of those eight characteristics. Finally, do some research to, to, to determine which of the eight characteristics apply to the following, bacteria, viruses, and computer viruses. If you can complete the last two slides without referring to the earlier slides, or the textbook, 
that is, if you're fluent enough with the terminology and concepts, then you're ready to go on to Chapter 1, Video 2, Taxonomy and Phylogenetics. Thanks.